One thing that many people use Excel for is storing data in a list or table. Traditionally, that data is stored in cells in the worksheet, headings in one row and data in the rows underneath. But there's another place that can be used to store that sort of data. And that place is called the data model. What is the data model? Different people describe it in different ways. I call it a container to store data. By the way, the data model is only supported in Excel on Windows. If you open a file that has data stored in the data model in Excel on the Mac or Excel on the web, you won't get any errors. But as soon as you try and do something with that data, such as update it or build a pivot table from it, you'll get an error. Although it's part of the file, the data model isn't part of the worksheet. It's hidden away behind the scenes. And how you access it, I'll show you shortly. This Excel file has several sheets in it. Orders, stores and products. Each of those sheets contain a table of data. This is the data model for the same file. It contains the same three tables. Storing the data in the worksheet and the data model within the same file isn't good practice because it increases the size of the file. But I've done it so that you can see how the data looks in both environments. So why would you store data in the data model? Why not store it in the worksheet like you've always done? There must be some benefit to storing the data in the data model. The main reason to store data in the data model is to create pivot tables where the data comes from more than one table or list. Imagine that I want to create a pivot table from the three lists that are stored in the worksheets. The store names come from the stores table, the product names come from the products table, and the revenue comes from the orders table. What you're looking at now isn't a pivot table. I've had to mock it up. The reason I've had to do that is because Excel will only let you create a pivot table from a single table or range. However, if the data is stored in the data model, this limitation is removed. Let me show you. I'm going to click on insert and then click the arrow underneath the pivot table button and select from data model. I'm going to confirm where I want the pivot table to go. So I'm going to say A1 on the sheet called pivot tables two. click OK. And then I get the familiar pivot table placeholder and the panel on the right hand side. I'm going to expand the stores section and drag location into rows. I'm going to expand the products section and drag product into columns and expand the orders section and drag revenue into values. Another reason for storing your data in the data model is if you're working with a huge data set. I remember an ex-colleague who had a CSV file containing 2 million rows. He needed to import all the data into Excel, but was getting an error message that there was too much data. An Excel worksheet contains just over a million rows. The solution? Load the data directly into the data model, which has a much larger capacity. So how do you get the data into the data model and how do you view the data in the data model? Let's start with viewing data that's already in the data model. So if I click on the data tab on the ribbon and then I click on the data model button, it's the green button over towards the right and click on manage data model. I then need to click enable to enable the data analysis add-in and that add-in is called Power Pivot, which I describe as a tool that manages the data model. So I'll click on enable and that will then open up the data model window, which I can maximize. Here we can see that the data model contains three tables, orders, stores and products. And then I'll close the data model window with the cross at the top right. So that's what the data model looks like. But how do you get your data into the data model? Well, there's actually several ways to do it. If the data that you want to put into the data model is stored externally, so for example, in a CSV file or another Excel file or a SharePoint list, then click on data and use the options 
on the Get Data menu, which is also known as Power Query. Suppose I want to load data from a CSV file, which is on my desktop, into the data model of this Excel file. I've clicked on Data, I've clicked on Get Data, I'll click From File, From Text or CSV. I then need to select the CSV file and click Import. I get a preview of the data that's in the CSV file. I click the drop down arrow next to Load at the bottom and select Load 2. I then tick the box that says Add this data to the data model. That's pretty self explanatory. But I also need to choose Only Create a Connection because if I leave it set to Table, it will load the data into the data model, but it will also load a copy of the data from the CSV file into the spreadsheet, which is what I want to avoid. So I'll choose Only Create a Connection and click on OK. Then to see the data in the data model, I can either use Data data model, but I can also use the Power Pivot ribbon. Once you've enabled the Power Pivot add-in, you get Power Pivot on the ribbon. And I can click Power Pivot and there's a Manage button there. So either way will do Data, Manage Data Model or Power Pivot Manage. They both do the same thing. Open up the Data Model window or the Power Pivot window. And there it is. There is the data. It's been loaded into the data model of this file. Now, what if I had data in the worksheet in an Excel file and I wanted to load it into the data model of the same Excel file? Yes, I know I said earlier that's not good practice, but it can still be done. So here I have two data sets on two different sheets. One contains details of sales transactions. The other contains store details. I need to get both data sets into the data model and then build pivot tables where the data comes from both tables. For example, I need a pivot table that shows total revenue for each store name. First of all, the data needs to be formatted as tables, which I've already done. And then to add the two data sets to the data model, I click anywhere in one of the data sets and click Power Pivot, Add to Data Model. That makes a copy of the data and puts it into the data model. The data is still in the spreadsheet. So I'll close down the Power Pivot window and then I'll do the same thing for the other table. So I've jumped to the order sheet, Power Pivot, Add to Data Model. What I then need to do is create a connection or a relationship between the two tables. So you can see that in the orders table, we have a store ID, which contains the numbers one to five. And in the stores table, we have store ID that contains the numbers one to five. So I'll go up to the diagram view and with my mouse, I will drag store ID onto store ID and that creates a connection or a relationship between the two tables. If I go back to data view, the reason I'm doing that is so that Excel knows when I build the pivot table, which revenue to assign to which store. I'll then close the data model down. And at this point, I could then create my pivot table. The third way to get data into the data model is during the pivot table creation. So if I click on insert pivot table, this time not the arrow underneath pivot table, because I don't want to build the pivot table from data in the data model, because at this point there is no data in the data model. So I just click on the top half of the pivot table button. There's a checkbox, add this data to the data model. Ticking this box makes a copy of the data and stores it in the data model of this file. So now we've got two copies of that data. One copy is in the spreadsheet cells and the other copy is in the data model. Because the data is now stored twice in the same file, it's probably not best practice to do it this way anyway. Before I wrap up, I did say I'd show you how to update the data in the data model. You need to update the source data first. So if that source data is in the worksheet of the same file, you update the data in the worksheet and then click on Data, Refresh All. If the source data is in an external source, so a CSV or SharePoint list or another Excel file, for example, 
when that data gets updated, open the Excel file, the one with the data in the data model. You don't have to go into the data model. You can stay in the spreadsheet part of Excel and click data refresh all. That reloads the data from the source into the data model. And once the data in the data model has been updated, any pivot tables based on that data are updated. Well, I hope the video helped you out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like more Excel tips and tricks, check out my website at theexceltrainer.co.uk. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.